Hey guys, so good morning and welcome back to my channel. Um, I wanted to film a really quick video today considering that we've actually finished all of our first year exams. So um, now that I have time on my hands over the summer, I really want to film um, more videos, uh, I guess, that reflect back on my first year experience and also how I studied during my first year. So for today's video, I wanted to focus it on anatomy. Um, so the way I wanted to split up this video is I wanted to give an introduction into how um, anatomy in medical school is structured um, and how I studied for anatomy um, before the, di the dissections and then how I um, prepared after the dissections and then what resources I used in order to, um, I guess, review and study for the exams. So let's get right into it. So um, the first part is talking about what anatomy in medical school is like. So um, at our university, we are given a booklet um, where it outlines what the dissection will be covering. Um, and we usually have a lecture before that dissection that goes through what we're supposed to expect during the dissection. So anatomy is one of the subjects in medical school I think that requires probably the most um, self-study just because it is entirely based on writing up your own notes, understanding the figures yourself, being able to label the prosections, and being able to um, prepare before the dissections. So prior to every um, dissection that we conducted in the actual anatomy labs, um, we were given one of these workbooks. So, so the written copy that I have right here, um, this had a list of all of the different terms that we needed to know. We also were given a set of learning objectives, so you can see that listed on here. So it was important to use the learning objectives as well as the keywords that were listed in order to structure all of my notes. So uh, following the dissection, we were given a set of questions that our group had to answer, and so we were asked, um, for example, uh, what is the innervation for the diaphragm? So we would have to know that it's C345. So that was basically a general outline of how any anatomy dissection is structured. It would always be an introductory lecture first, then the actual dissection, and then it's up to us to review that specific um, system in the body. So now I'm gonna talk about how I specifically studied for anatomy, um, how I structured my notes, and how I reviewed for um, anatomy after the dissections. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the resources that I used as well. One thing is that I really preferred using an online copy of the textbook because it helped me search for things really easily. I could easily take a screenshot and insert that into my notes and it helped me so much when I was memorizing things for the exam. Alright, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how our anatomy was structured. So like I mentioned, this is the online copy of the workbook for anatomy that we had. Um, and if I go through this, it talks a little bit about what we're actually expected to know. So these are the learning outcomes that are going to be listed somewhere on here. It would also tell us what pages in here to read and um, what videos we could watch and also the keywords that were really important to know. So I'm going to show you guys how I actually structured my notes using those um, really important um, learning objectives as well as the really important keywords. So. What I first did is I organized the different um, learning objectives into bullet points. So I wrote them down in blue. And so you'll see every page or so I have a new learning objective or however long it took me to fill in uh, that learning objective. And then once the learning objectives I, uh, were filled out for that specific unit, what I did is I now went through the different um, keywords that were important to know. So for example, if glenohumeral was listed in one of the keywords to know, I made sure that I at least researched a sentence or two about what the glenohumeral joint was and where it connects to. So the two most important resources that I use and that I would recommend for completing any of my notes were um, were this one which was Grant's Atlas of Anatomy. So I think having an atlas is really important because it helps you understand what you're going to expect when you go into the dissection room. When you look at the surface anatomy of different, um, I guess, of the limbs, almost everything looks the same. It doesn't look, it's very hard to actually identify 
um, different parts of the lower limb for example or different parts of the upper limb so I, I really preferred using an atlas because it allowed me to orient myself and visualize where on the um, cadaver I was going to see different uh, veins for example so in this case the great saphenous vein and um, how it separate from the dorsal venous arch for example and when I actually wrote my notes I took screenshots of the corresponding parts and put them into my atlas so for example if I was doing this surface anatomy of the shoulder I would make sure that I knew uh, what it looked like um, on the surface but then I also made sure that I would do an in-depth anatomical um, diagram that was labeled as well so um, the other book that I used other than an atlas was um, Moore and Ager. Um, it was Essential Clinical Anatomy by Moore and Ager. So what I would do is if I was given, um, so if we had a keyword that said tears major muscle and tears minor muscle, I would look into the atlas and see what that looked like on the cadaver itself. And then I would go into my um, clinical an anatomy book and then I would look at what the figure um, or what the muscles when they're labeled look like as well. Um, it was also really, this book was also really good because it told me what the attachments were, um, the innervations and the main actions of the muscles uh, that I was looking for. So I thought that this book was really good. So another really helpful tool that I used before every single dissection was a website called Human Bio Digital. I would recommend this for anyone who is trying to prepare really well for their dissections. Um, and the reason why I say this is because this offered me a full 3D model of what the cadaver looked like before I went into the dissection room. So for example let's say we go into an upper limb dissection what I would do is I would go into anatomy by regions within this website um, and then once I go into anatomy by regions I would now go into the upper limb dissection specifically and within the upper limb dissection this tool was really useful because it allowed me to actually hide the different muscles and also learn more about them while I identified them so let's say I clicked on the right pectoralis major muscle um, I know that when I go into the dissection room and see the cadaver, I know that the first muscle that I see on top um, would be the pectoralis major muscle. Once this muscle is pulled back, I would see this the pectoralis minor muscle. So I would know that this is the next muscle I expect to see in, in the dissection room. So this was a really important tool because I could zoom in and orient myself and um, look at the different innervations, the veins, arteries, and nerves that ran through um, the right side of the thorax. So it actually shows you where these muscles are attached. Um, so the right deltoid, and you can always learn more about them or even read more about them. For example, the right subscapularis. So it tells me that it inserts into the lesser tubercle of the humerus in the front capsule, uh, front of the capsule of the shoulder joint. So I really like this tool and I would recommend that before dissection everyone really goes through this. Um, it really prepares you for what you're going to expect when you go into DR. Um, because one thing I found was that in the DR, um, the, the cadaver itself and the upper limbs or lower limbs or whatever parts we were supposed to be looking at was very very different from all of the textbooks and all of the different atlases that we looked at. So I think it's really important to be able to orient yourself and know what the muscle looks like from the right, left, back, and basically from any side that you're visualizing it from. Um, and other than these three tools, I did use a bit of Teach Me Anatomy because after I wrote down my notes, I just quickly went through Teach Me Anatomy and made sure that I actually wrote down all of this different information in my own notes, and I found it pretty useful. Um, so in terms of actually studying for anatomy, um, all I did is that these notes took me about a day and a half to complete, but that's just the way anatomy is structured and it, it definitely was challenging at first, especially because anatomy was something completely new to us. When it came to studying for the exams, all I did was that I just went through my notes once, twice, and basically I just keep, kept repeating the information and kept reading it over and over again. Um, eventually, when it came to the dissection room, I was definitely very prepared because my notes took me so long to make. So I hope that this video was really helpful um, and I hope that it helped you guys kind of get an idea of um, what anatomy in medical school is like. Please let me know if there's anything else that you'd like me to film and um, talk about in the next couple of videos that I make. And thank you guys so much for watching.